In the 8th century BC, ancient Rome grew from a small town on the banks of the Tiber River in Italy to become an empire that encompassed most of continental Europe, Britain, much of Western Asia, Northern Africa, and the Mediterranean islands at its peak. To this day, no one can dispute the impact Roman civilization has had on our modern world, which is evident in the many legacies that continue to endure, such as the modern Western alphabet and calendar, the widespread use of the five Romance languages derived from Latin, which are Italian, French, Spanish, Portuguese, and Romanian, the basis of law in much of the world, and the emergence of Christianity as a major world religion. After 450 years as a republic, Rome became an empire in the wake of Julius Caesar's rise and fall in the first century BC. The long and triumphant reign of its first emperor, Augustus, began a golden age of peace and prosperity. By contrast, the Roman Empire's decline and fall by the 5th century AD was one of the most dramatic implosions in the history of human civilization. According to legend, Rome was founded in 753 BC by Romulus and Remus, two sons of Mars, the god of war. Left to drown in a basket on the Tiber River by a king of nearby Alba Longa and rescued by a she-wolf, the twins lived to defeat that king and found their own city on the river's banks. When seeking the perfect location for their new city, the twins wandered across the seven hills, Aventine, Celio, Capital, Esquiline, Palatine, Quirinal, and Viminal. Ramus wished to start the city on the Aventine Hill, while Romulus preferred the Palatine Hill. In order to decide which brother was right, they agreed to consult Augury, where birds are examined to see what the gods favored. Ramus claimed to have seen six birds, whereas his brother had seen twelve. Even though Romulus had seen more birds, Ramus argued that he had seen them first, and therefore the city should be built on the Aventine Hill. Meanwhile, Romulus began to build a wall on his hill, which Ramus decided to jump over. Angered by his brother's action, Romulus killed him. After killing his brother, Romulus became the first king of Rome, which is named for him. Latin and Etruscan kings followed in non-hereditary succession. There are seven legendary kings of Rome. Romulus, Numa Popillus, Tullus Hostilus, Ancus Mauritius, Lucius Taranquius Priscus, Cerverus Tilius, and Tarquinus Superbus. While they were referred to as Rex, or King in Latin, all the kings after Romulus were elected by the Senate. Rome's era as a monarchy ended in 509 BC, with the overthrow of its seventh king, Lucius Tarquinus Superbus, whom ancient historians often portrayed as cruel and tyrannical. A popular uprising was said to have arisen over the rape of a virtuous noblewoman, Lucretia, by the king's son. Whatever the cause, Rome turned from a monarchy into a republic, a word derived from res publica, or property of the people. The power of the monarch passed to two annually elected magistrates called consuls. They also served as commanders-in-chief of the army. The magistrates, though elected by the people, were drawn largely from the Senate, which was dominated by the patricians, or the descendants of the original senators from the time of Romulus. Politics in the early Republic was marked by long struggle between patricians and plebeians, the common people who eventually attained some political power through years of concessions from patricians. In 450 BC, 
The first Roman law code was inscribed on 12 bronze tablets, known as the Twelve Tables, and publicly displayed in the Roman Forum. These laws included issues of legal procedure, civil rights, and property rights, and provided the basis for all future Roman civil law. By around 300 BC, the real political power in Rome was centered in the Senate, which at this time included only members of patrician and wealthy plebeian families. During the early Republic, the Roman state grew exponentially in both size and power. Though the Gauls sacked and burned Rome in 390 BC, the Romans rebounded under the leadership of a military hero named Camillus, and eventually gained control of the entirety of the Italian peninsula by 264 BC. Rome then fought a series of wars known as the Punic Wars with Carthage, a powerful city-state in northern Africa. The first two Punic Wars ended with Rome in full control of Sicily, the western Mediterranean, and much of Spain. In the Third Punic War, from 149 to 146 BC, the Romans captured and destroyed the city of Carthage and sold its surviving inhabitants into slavery, making a section of northern Africa a Roman province. At the same time, Rome also spread its influence east, defeating King Philip V of Macedonia in the Macedonian Wars and turned his kingdom into another Roman province. Rome's military conquests led directly to its cultural growth as a society, as the Romans benefited greatly from contact with such advanced cultures as the Greeks. The first Roman literature had not appeared until around 240 BC, with translations of Greek classics into Latin. Romans would eventually adopt much of Greek art, philosophy, and religion. When the victorious Pompey returned to Rome, he formed an uneasy alliance known as the First Triumvirate, with the wealthy Marcus Licinius Crassus, who suppressed a slave rebellion led by Spartacus in 71 BC, and another rising star in Roman politics, Gaius Julius Caesar. After earning military glory in Spain, Caesar returned to Rome to vie for the consulship in 59 BC. From his alliance with Pompey and Crassus, Caesar received the governorship of three wealthy provinces in Gaul, beginning in 58 BC. He then set out to conquer the rest of the region for Rome. After Pompey's wife Julia, Caesar's daughter, died in 54 BC, and Crassus was killed in the battle against Parthia, present-day Iran the following year, the triumvirate was broken. With old-style Roman politics in disorder, Pompey stepped in as sole consul in 53 BC. Caesar's military glory in Gaul and his increasing wealth had eclipsed Pompey's, and the latter teamed with his Senate allies to steadily undermine Caesar. In 49 BC, Caesar and one of his legions crossed the Rubicon River on the border between Italy from Cisalpine Gaul. Caesar's invasion of Italy ignited a civil war from which he emerged as dictator of Rome for life in 45 BC. Less than a year later, Julius Caesar was murdered on 15 March 44 BC, commonly referred to as the Ides of March, by a group of his enemies, led by the Republican nobles Marcus Junius Brutus and Gaius Cassius. Consul Mark Antony and Caesar's great-nephew and adopted heir Octavian joined forces to crush Brutus and Cassius and divided power in Rome with ex-consul Lepidus in what is known as the Second Triumvirate. With Octavian leading the western provinces, Antony the East and Lepidus Africa, tensions developed in 36 BC 
and the triumvirate soon dissolved. In 31 BC, Octavian triumphed over the forces of Antony and Queen Cleopatra of Egypt in the Battle of Actium, after which Antony and Cleopatra committed suicide. By 29 BC, Octavian was the sole leader of Rome and all its provinces. To avoid meeting Caesar's fate, he made sure to make his position as absolute ruler acceptable to the public by apparently restoring the political institutions of the Roman Republic while in reality retaining all the real power for himself. In 27 BC, Octavian assumed the title of Augustus, becoming the first emperor of Rome. Augustus's rule restored morale in Rome after a century of dissension and corruption and ushered in the famous Pax Romana, two full centuries of peace and prosperity. He instituted various social reforms, won numerous military victories, and allowed Roman literature, art, architecture, and religion to flourish. Augustus ruled for 56 years, supported by his great army and by a growing cult of devotion to the emperor. When he died, the Senate elevated Augustus to the status of a god, beginning a long-running tradition of deification for popular emperors. Augustus's dynasty included the unpopular Tiberius, 14 to 37 AD, the bloodthirsty and unstable Caligula, 37 to 41, and Claudius, 41 to 54, who was best remembered for his army's conquest of Britain. The line ended with Nero, 54 to 68, whose excesses drained the Roman treasury and led to his downfall and eventual suicide. Four emperors ruled in the tumultuous years after Nero's death. The fourth, Vespasian, 69 to 79, and his successors, Titus and Domitian, were known as the Flavians. They attempted to temper the excesses of the Roman court, restore Senate authority, and promote public welfare. Titus, 79 to 81, earned his people's devotion with his handling of the recovery efforts after the infamous eruption of Vesuvius, which destroyed the towns of Herculaneum and Pompeii. The reign of Nerva, 96 to 98, who was selected by the Senate to succeed Domitian, began another golden age in Roman history, during which four emperors, Trajan, Hadrian, Antonius Pius, and Marcus Aurelius, took the throne peacefully, succeeding one another by adoption, as opposed to the hereditary succession. Trajan, from 98 to 117 AD, expanded Rome's borders to the greatest extent in the history with victories over the kingdoms of Dacia, now northwestern Romania, and Parthia. His successor, Hadrian, from 117 to 138, solidified the empire's frontier, famously building Hadrian's Wall in present-day England, and continued his predecessor's work of establishing internal stability and instituting administrative reforms. Under Antonius Pius, 138 to 161, Rome continued in peace and prosperity, but the reign of Marcus Aurelius, 161 to 180, was dominated by conflict, including war against Parthia and Armenia, and the invasion of Germanic tribes from the north. When Marcus died, he broke with the tradition of non-hereditary succession and named his 19-year-old son Commodus as his successor. It is at this point in the history of ancient Rome that we reach the point of no return, and the fall of this great empire becomes inevitable. Join us for part two of our journey through the history of the Roman Empire and its eventual fall, and look back at the legacies it has left behind, which are still part of our modern world to this day, right here on the pain 
of progress.